Do you know what happened to the industrial visualization within the last years? What used to be a means to an end for years developed into a very important quality criteria for many machine builders all over the world. And with that change, we can see very clearly that with digitalization, not only completely new topics are coming up, like, for example, cloud computing, but also topics which are part of automation solutions are changing completely. And one of these topics, you guess it, it's the visualization. But where can we see that visualization is changing and what's behind that? So in the first step, everything is becoming more and more. More data is generated in every digital factory. And this data needs to be collected. This data needs to be stored. And this data needs to be available on a long-term basis. You know, be, because we want, we want to make detailed analys analysis on the data. We want to use the data from the factory to train AI algorithms, for example. So more data. But not only more data, but also more systems working with that data. On the one hand side, we have the automation technology. On the other side, we have the IT technology. Both systems need to be connected together. Exchange data, send data from A to B, send it back, you name it. But it's not only more systems, it's also, for example, think about bring your own device. Operators expect to go into the factory to make their shift there, and they want to get all the diagnostics information directly to their wrist, for example, on their smartwatch. So that's a great indicator that the way how we interact with systems is also fundamentally changing. Just think about chatbot systems. Think about augmented reality. Think about speech recognition. Think about speech control. All of the topics are very familiar to us from our private lives. And I'm pretty sure that they will be part of many industrial applications, although in the future. And there we can see that with common visualization tools, that they might reach their limit. And that can lead to the situation that a tool probably feels right, but is actually the wrong for the future. To be honest, it's not only the technical aspects. There are some more things. In 1965, Gordon Moore, one of the co-founders of Intel's, predicted that in our time, the complexity and the number of transistors in a dense integrated circuit will double regularly within two years, based on minimum component costs. But what does it mean? OK, if technology is evolving and it's getting more complex, what does it mean for the overall solution? Complexity will also increase. And the limiting factor in that game, it's us, the humans. Because our cognitive load barrier will remain on the same level. And the challenge is more and more to break down technological complexity to make the systems easy to learn, make them easy to use, and make them fun to use. What does it mean for machine builders? To be honest, to reach that, more initial effort is required in the conceptual phase. And this additional effort needs to be compensated within the engineering phase to be faster in the end, because that's also quite sure, innovation cycles, innovation cycles becoming shorter and shorter. Nevertheless, it's a great idea to spend the effort because I'm sure that you do not want your customers to be in front of your machine like that 
just because they have no idea how to handle. There's one more thing which also will change within automation. For decades, it was like develop a machine, build it, make the commissioning, and never touch it until there's the, the next big retrofit. You know that? Never change a running system. But from my point of view, this will and this has to change in order to provide value to the end customer. Because especially the visualization is under pressure there. Just think about your smartphone or your tablet from at home. How often is the UI changing? New functionalities are coming in and making it easier to use that. And I'm sure that we're going to have the situation that common visualization tools will not be able to do so. And you see clearly what you can do. You know that it will be valuable for you, but you have no idea how to do. And so remains the question, what will the visualization of the future look like? What is their fundamental DNA? And from our point of view, there are four major topics. First, the technology. We need more powerful, powerful technology in order to be more flexible. And flexible also regarding the size of application. That means scalability from a small solution directly at the machine up to a control center solution on the scalar level. And we don't want to use the visualization only on-premise because we want to use it everywhere. Smartphone, tablet, PC, panel, smartwatch, you name it, we need it everywhere. And last but not least, we need everything connected together. That means integration of automation-based systems with IT systems and bring everything together. And this has been the starting point for us to start the development of a completely new visualization system. The Semantic WinCC Unified System. A completely new developed visualization system within TIA portal consisting of hard and software. Let's take a look to the software first. Semantic WinCC Unified. The runtime software is completely new developed based on native web technology. That means HTML5, SVG, and JavaScript. And that makes the technology not only very powerful, but also device independent. You just need a modern web browser to get access to the visualization. And the new architecture allows us to implement new approaches like object-oriented engineering. When the Unified is scalable from a small solution on the panel, that means completely new hardware up to a control center on the SCADA level. And with WinCC Unified Collaboration, we've integrated a mechanism that will allow you to set up distributed systems and exchange data, even if it's a screen or text or archived data. And with version 16, that will come up right now this week, we are able to use it on the panels and we are able to use it on the PC. But that's just the beginning, right? Because WinCC Unified is prepared for the usage within cloud or edge environment. And you can also use the screens in augmented reality scenarios. And for the openness of the overall system, we've integrated different interfaces, even if it's for the engineering, that means TR portal openness, to automate your engineering workflows, 
or if it's high performance data interfaces to exchange data with other systems in the operation. And together with the plant intelligence options, WinCC Unified is becoming the integration platform of the digital factory for the future. That's the software coming to the hardware. A completely new generation, semantic HMI Unified Comfort Panels. That means the first generation of hardware powered by Semantic WinCC Unified, coming with high-end performance and comfortable multi-touch operation from 7 to 22 inch. And there's one more thing, and my, from my point of view, it's more a revolution instead of an evolution, because the first time, thanks to the support of Siemens Industrial Edge, you will be able to extend the standard functionality of the devices by apps. All right, now you know the major highlights of the Semantic WinCC Unified system. And I'd be very happy if you join me after this presentation, going to the selected area on the booth, having some detailed discussions on that and get more into the details. If you're not sure yet if it's worth it, I have one more thing which will definitely convince you. And for that, I need my tablet right over there. So going to connect that for you here directly to our wall. And hopefully, you can see it right there. So I open up just the Safari browser on my tablet. All right. Now entering my IP address to get access to the WinCC Unified Server. All right, just need to enter my credentials. You know that, safety first. All right, I'm inside. And you can see that the visualization of WinCC Unified just on my iPad. All right, now we can, we can use all this new technology to make fancy stuff, for example, I can use swipe gestures to adapt the machine speed, but I can also use the swipe gestures to make a screen change like that. All right. I'm just inside my visualization. Can go a little bit through it. Looks nothing really special so far, right? A web-based UI, beautifully skim, beautifully UI, and I can go through that, have some trends inside there, and Oh, to be honest, this is what I not wanted to show you, because, Maya. Uh, anyway. No, nope. no computer gaming up here. I'm sorry. Come on. I'm the party pooper. Before you start cracking the high score in this one here, maybe I will we, do. Maybe, maybe we want to ask some of our customers whether they are interested as well in joining. You guys rem remember that computer game? Oh, yeah, there are some addicts in here. Okay, gamer community. Felix, where can these guys join you at the booth in order to start a gaming community? Just straight forward there, where we have the large pylons. You will find me there in just a few minutes. HMI. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, I'm Felix. Out. Big hand of applause. Siemens, ingenuity for life.